Hello, I'm Rob Gilbert, the Dean of Research for UF IFAS, and I'd like to discuss the UFARM uh, crop management charge system with you today. Uh, UFARM is a new system that's being developed to charge usual and customary expenses for crop management fees for experiments that our faculty have at RECs around the state. On why can't we just use the existing rates that our uh, advisory board set up or that we think are usual industry rates for different crops? The university is required requiring that all expenses and revenue be paired in Fund 183, which is being established in PeopleSoft. And so we have to show that the actual expenses uh, that we're charging on crops is lined up to what rates we can charge on grants. Right? So the rates that we've had in the past that different centers have used uh, based on the discussions with faculty, I mean, it's valuable information. However, going forward, we need to back that up and base the rates on charges that are going to be entered in through the PeopleSoft system in Fund 183. There are many benefits to the system as well. The most important one is by using UFARM, we'll be able to get grant funding back in to RECs that haven't had this option in the past. So that'll be able to provide funding to support our centers. In addition, as I've mentioned, we will be ensuring compliance with federal regulations. Um, this should Im improve the ease of billing to federal grants through the system. It'll be a monthly billing process. Um, we also will be able to improve the planning of our field experiments with our farm managers and the lead time for that. And then finally, accurately um, identify what crops we're working with and what locations around the state and get data on that for the first time in IFAS. Once uh, UFARM expenses are charged on a grant, where does the revenue go? And it's important to realize that all of that revenue will go back to the site where it was generated, right? This should be important for RECs uh, because some of them have not had a mechanism, mechanism to do this in the past. And so that revenue will go back to the REC where the experiment uh, has been conducted. What is included in the UFARM rate and what is not? Um, there are certain items that are included, the, including usual and customary charges. These include repairs and maintenance uh, on equipment uh, and vehicles, uh, fuel and oils, um, supplies, and purchases less than $5,000 that have to be uh, associated with that experiment. It doesn't include OPS labor, for example, POM costs, uh, travel, publication costs, etc. What are the new U farm rates? Um, well, the rates that we're using were originally calculated from the site where we had the best financial information, that was PSREU, uh, and they covered most but not all of the crops that we're using around the state. And these rates will be annually refreshed. So as we get more data for more locations around the state, we'll refresh these on an annual basis. We're also adding in new commodities, starting with Trek, add in some of the tropical crops uh, that we farm, and then we'll add in additional crops over the next year with our goal to have rates for all the commodities that we work with. This would have been much easier if we were in Iowa, only working with corn and soybeans. We appreciate your patience as we work through this complex list of crops uh, that we deal with. How will I implement these rates if they're different from what I have on a present grant? We certainly realize that these will be new to you, and so we will hold faculty harmless in this process. Enter the new rates on your grants, and we will work with you to make sure uh, that you're held whole as we go through this new system. How will faculty use UFARM? Well, we'll show you how to enter your uh, GatorLink information into the new UFARM website, and there you will be able to um, plan your grant application in terms of the number of acres of the crop that you'll be working with, and that will be submitted to the farm managers and REC directors uh, for approval. Then once the grant uh, does hit and you're able to get the funds, there'll be automatic billing uh, as this UFARM system is linked to you first. The timing of this, uh, we will start in July with several locations. Those include PSREU, Southwest Florida REC, Fort Lauderdale REC, Indian River REC, West Florida REC, Mid-Florida REC, Everglades REC, and Tropical REC. 
All other locations will be added by January of 2020. So we recognize that this will be a new system for many of you. And we have trainings planned for our fiscal and farm management staff, uh, different areas around the state, as the system is rolled out uh, in the coming months. In addition, we recognize that faculty will have questions as well, and we'll participate in faculty meetings to explain the new system uh, to them. Um, we also know that some of you might be asking, well, but my animal trial isn't included, or my greenhouse trial isn't included in these rates, and that's true. We want to start with our commodities, the different crops that we work with out in the fields uh, around the state. And then we will have to add in the future uh, different uh, rates for greenhouse trials, hoop house trials, extensive grazing trials, and animal agriculture as well. We also anticipate that as we get more data in each year about crops, uh, we'll, we'll be able to build more robust data uh, on the crops that we work with and have more harmonized and better rates as we go through the system. So thank you very much for your attention and please let us know should you have any questions.